one to the two, two to the three, and a place to be. It is the Impact Lounge Impact Wrestling Review. This is your host, BQ, along with Adam when we're talking this week's Impact Wrestling. We're going to cut right to the chase this week. I'm not going to BS with you. I'm a little crunched on time. It's my reserve weekend, so I do not have any time off this weekend. It's about 4.42 a.m. over here for me. I think it's uh, close to 11 a.m. for you, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's about right. Yeah, mid-morning. Mid-morning. Okay, good stuff. So uh, we're, we're going to jump right into this impact review. Not, not going to uh, talk about a whole lot else. Apologies for last week. There was no show. We actually did record a show. It just did not record. And uh, really time uh, time did not permit for to, to redo it. So apologies. I tr- do my best to try to be consistent, but it just did not happen last week. So let's uh, let's dive right into this episode of impact this week. Um, I, you know, Adam, we talked last week that the show was not very good last week. And I, I, re- I rarely say that I usually find something to enjoy and everything, but, uh, last week's was not good. And this one was not any better or any different. I don't know. What, what were your overall thoughts on this one? Yeah, I, I think last week's was a masterpiece compared to this one. Um, <laughs> it, it was, well, to be honest, it didn't feel like a show. It felt like I watched last week's again because there were so many recaps. And uh, I think in the first hour alone, I think there was one squash match and that was it. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I can't remember. But uh, it was quite a poor show, unfortunately, because, uh, you know, we're, we're leading up to, to Bound for Glory. And I just wonder if they got enough material. Uh, and maybe that's why they dig so many of these recaps. You know, uh, about a year ago, last year's Slammiversary had a great build. The Bound for Glory build was pretty, pretty decent, too. Uh, this year's Slammiversary build, I wasn't crazy about but i didn't dislike it but this this bound for glory build has been horrendous um this episode had a lot of um a lot of recaps i think even played some of the recaps twice (laughs) and you know some of these video clips and video packages like there's a time where i really enjoy them i thought impact for a lot of last year and the in the past was missing that but now it's almost like it's too much of it um, you know, they're obviously trying to fill time. So it's the, the shows had lately just been laid out very poorly. And I hate talking bad cause I, you know, I usually find a way to enjoy the, the, the matches, but, or the show, but gosh, these last two were rough. The crowd made it difficult because after having some really good impact zone crowds, uh, the last two weeks, um, which were the same night of tapings was, was kind of back to the old impact zone. Um, you know, and I, I try not to put those people down, but, you know, I think it's going to be exciting to see what happens in Canada. Mm. Uh, Just on the segments bit, if you don't mind me interrupting there, uh, BQ, is I, I really like segments, backstage segments. I much prefer, uh, you know, a, a show which has got some good cutaway scenes, etc., than just pure wrestling. And, and there's been a bit of a a worry for me that Ed Nordholm said that he wants to go back to more of a wrestling based product because, you know, I'm much more about uh, the stuff they do backstage as well. I love that stuff. And there was a time a couple of years ago where they were doing some really fantastic backstage stuff. Uh, and I talk about things like the search for Willow with Spud and EC3. I, I really enjoyed that. You know, the Aces and Eights funeral. I, I know it's all silly stuff, but I actually really like that kind of stuff. Even last year, Bram and uh, Rosemary when they were building that. I quite like those backstage segments. But now the only one we seem to have got going on backstage is, is either Team America, which I'm sure we'll come on to uh, in a little while, <laughs> uh, and um, the Joseph Park stuff. But I don't know, the filming style of it all has changed, and I really don't like the filming style. I like the, the, the fan audition stuff, but this filming style feels different. And I just don't like it, uh, you know, and, and that, but, you know, on top of all the recaps, you know, I don't mind watching the wrestling. I know it sounds strange. I don't mind wrestling matches in a wrestling show. But when you get a recap of, of last week's wrestling match, it's just awful, you know, and, and, and it's really affecting the product for me at the moment. Right. Um, a lot of the times it's not really necessary. And, uh, you know, regarding the show being more wrestling based, I think it's just going to have less uh, it, in ring uh, mic segments and things like that. That's kind of where I, I really understood it. I, th- I think some of the backstage storytelling is necessary, but 
Yeah, we'll see. I'm, I'm not a big fan of just a wrestling product either. That's why I never really connected to Ring of Honor. You know, I do like some stories. But uh, all that being said, it kicks off with LAX in the ring. And this is already where it just starts off really weird. Because maybe I misunderstood last week's. But I thought they already had the match set for Bound for Glory, the 5150 street fight. And this is a segment where LAX comes out and uh, OVE comes out. And they're just, you know, they're good in the ring. They're just awful talking um so they do a little segment conan is always saying the same thing and sometimes he has a lot of shock value to what he says but then it's like the next week the next week he continues to use a lot of the same references and everything and it's just kind of loses steam a little bit but ove comes out and says you know anytime any place you know like it's the 80s and uh conan says it's gonna be a 51 50 street fight and but the announcers already knew it was a 51 street fight so 5150 street fight so just weird opening segment the brawl was great the 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 way they kicked OBE's ass and those moves they did through the chairs or through the tables and all yeah the tables and chairs I mean that was all badass but the talking and the storytelling not so much yeah fully agreed yeah um it, it seems like they obviously they filmed all, all these in ring segments so uh, but it feels like that they needed to get this segment on the same show where they announced it in the clubhouse that they were having this. Uh, and it just feels like maybe they ran out of time to get them both on the same show last week. So, uh, yeah, it's, the storytelling is a bit fractured with this one. The, we, we get some of the backstage, segment, not backstage, but um, video packages with Japan, with Eddie Edwards um, against Mara Fuji. Drake, he had a, Eli Drake uh, took on Cody Hall. Funny thing about Cody Hall, he was in the uh, in the military um, around the time. Well, I mean, I was in for quite a while, but yeah, he was in when I was. Uh, and his Wikipedia will will say that he left <laughs> the military to um, pursue pro wrestling. But from my understanding, he was uh, he was kicked out. Um, <laughs> he did he did the same job I did, so I I, I kind of knew of some people were semi connected to him and said he did not have a very honorable career, if you will. But, um, so the theme kind of of this night was to try to make us feel like Garza Jr. was a main eventer. Um, he had a couple talking segments and everything. Uh, and, and it's not a knock on his accent or anything because a lot of wrestlers have accents. Um, but I didn't think he was a good talker in these segments. I, I didn't, I, I didn't really, uh, buy into it. And, um, you know, they put him in his main event scene just out of nowhere. There was no rhyme or reason for it. All of a sudden, he has this blood feud with Johnny Impact. Um, that's unnecessary. It just makes no sense. And uh, then they use this episode to try to convince us that he's uh, number one contender material. And we all know, whether you read spoilers or not, that he wasn't going to win this match. Um, we'll get to the match, but any thoughts on the Garza? Yeah, I mentioned this last week that... Uh, I think he has got all the qualities for a top baby face. And he can also play maybe that Razor Ramon kind of heel as well down the line. I think there's a lot of equity in him. But he's just been put in this position out of nowhere, like you said. And maybe it's uh, something to do with the working relationship with Crash that they said, you know, we're going to put someone in a featured position maybe. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's politics backstage. But I, I like him. I really do like him. And when I was at the tapings, back for the Slammiversary tapings, he, you know, he was doing tag stuff. And he was the standout in the tag matches, I thought, you know, f from a live perspective. So I like him. But as you say, it's just uh, he's been pushed there too soon. And, and I think he would have got a lot more long term value for them in a feud with Braxton that was teased, uh, which has gone nowhere. I, I think that would have been much more where he should be at this stage in his career. But I think he's got a good, good look. Uh, and, and I think he could be a top baby face or a top heel as well, uh, whatever he decides to play. Right, it was like he had the one match match with Braxton Sutter. Three, I mean, I expected Braxton to get the victory and start um, laying the seeds for for the heel turn. Um, but instead, you know, it, it was a one and done, and and nothing came of it. So I think he is a, has a lot of talent as well. I just, you know, we go from having. Uh, the uh, I always forget what it's called, but the uh, you know basically the tournament every year um, for the number one contender. We go from that to 
uh, a match that we know who's going to win once it's booked. Um, just, just on that on that series, the the Bang for Glory series, I used to really like that concept with the league table, and I know it went on forever, but it gave meaning to some matches. And I know people leaving during the things or getting injured always, you know, it impacts on it. But I actually always used to really enjoy that. I thought it was a good concept having like a league. Right, and it would have been good for this year too. Is a lot of guys who've been struggling to get TV time, so this this could have worked. Um, they chose not to do that this year. Uh, Rosemary had a match versus Hannah Harper, and Rose, Rosemary's new look is is really awesome. I mean, it, it really works for a babyface Rosemary because you can't have her too creepy if she's a if she's a good guy now. And uh, this this look really works. It's a winner. Takes on Hannah Harper. It's a squash match. It's 45 minutes long. Um, seconds. Or 45 seconds. God, a 45 <laughs> minute squash match would be a talk of talk of pro wrestling. Um, yeah, 45 seconds long. Um, super quick. And she calls out Taya after the match. And this was I actually what I thought was the best part of the show. Um, when they have the little stare down, Rosemary's going to do the mist. And then Taya just missed her. Um that I thought, and then hits the road to Valhalla. I thought this was badass. You know, the only logical thing was like, how come Rosemary has to do the before the mist, and then Taya just spits her out. Um, you know, minor stuff. But I actually thought this was the best part of the show. I'm just a little disappointed they have a match next week because they really could. This is the one, you know, one on one match they really could have built something special for. Uh, leading up to Bound for Glory to a one-on-one, -on -one, um, which I would imagine they're going to have a one-on-one -on -one at Bound for Glory, and then we're getting one next week. So thoughts on uh, Taya Rosemary? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that it's just on the whole segment, look, I agree. I think she looks fantastic, like the hair, like the new makeup, really good. Hannah Harper, um, for someone who I, I don't actually ever been on the show before, I don't think she has, but uh, in the 45 seconds she was there, I got her character straight away. She was like, you know... Uh, you know, um, a woman of wealth, you know, who looks down on people, a bit like the Madison Rain kind of character. Got that in 45 seconds, so well done to her. I mean, it looked pretty rough, the move. Uh, she didn't sell the, the Red Wedding very well. Uh, but, but you know, that's, that's neither here nor there. She was there just to, to get the squash anyway. But, yeah, the segment with Ty was very good. Uh, I just don't understand why you give away your pay-per-view match on the show before the pay-per-view. Bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. I'm guessing there's going to be lots of interference, which is going to lead to some kind of gimmick, whether it's, you know, uh, I don't know, a hardcore match or something. Something has got to be different to just a straight-up match if they're giving it away next week. But good. Segment overall, uh, I really liked it. I think that's the, that match would be a good candidate for a last knockout standing match at Bound for Glory, but we've kind of had a couple of those this year, and it's not something you should use too much. But, you know, the, the TNA and Impact product has always been quick to throw uh, gimmick matches out there regardless. I mean, how many times we'll see a Monsters Ball match in a row, which we haven't seen one in a while. But um, but this should be really interesting. I'm excited to see what happens next week. I'm just, I'm just a little disappointed we're getting it so quickly because it's the one match I think they could really uh, build towards. And then we get uh, Moose showing that he's... Um, Recruiting a friend to hit up the America Top Team uh, facility. Taryn Terrell is in the ring next and cuts a promo in the ring. She demands that the uh, the fans cheer for her, uh, which I thought that was pretty good. You, Don't you boo me. Cheer for me. I, I thought that was all pretty good, and I, th I thought it was kind of necessary, too, because you know this, this crowd, as I said, was not super um, lively. So sometimes you got to play up the crowd a little bit. I thought she she did a pretty good job. Um, calls out Gail Kim, and uh, I, I'm kind of disappointed we're not going to get a one on one with Taryn and and Gail. And uh, but Gail Kim did say in the conference call after previously reported that Brown for Glory was her last match. She has, she said on there um, in reference to someone saying that to her. Well, I don't know when my last match is going to be. So maybe we're going to get something between the two of them. Um, I I don't know if Taryn's going to be around in the company long, which I really want her to be, but um, if Gail Kim is gone, you know, I'd imagine she came back for Gail Kim for a, for a final feud or something, but 
I don't know how much how much longer Taryn will be around. She's probably on a pretty short term contract too because um, she's going to be the lone veteran, and I don't really know what a role for her could be moving forward if Gail Kim isn't involved. But uh, Gail Kim unless can... she wins, unless she wins, of course. Right, 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 right. Um, yeah, and that that's a possibility if if Taryn actually uh, wins a championship, um, which I I think is very possible. Um, and she slaps uh, Tar- Tarot, which was which was a pretty uh, pretty stiff slap. And um, yeah, thoughts on uh, everything here with Taryn and Gail? Yeah, well, first of all, uh, I love having Taryn on the roster. I mean, absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Uh, and I know that's a very sexist thing to say. Sorry to any female listeners out there, but she is drop dead gorgeous. Uh, and I think that she's improved a lot on the mic as well. I mean, she's got a whiny voice. But it works for her character, and she knows how to work the crowd, even if the crowd wasn't brilliant. But, you know, she knows the right things to do. And you see that in some of the veterans like James Storms, nobody who does it very well. Bully Ray was always a master of it as well. And, and I think she's got that. And she's most probably the best knockout on the mic, I think. Uh, not f- From an annoying point of view, she's annoying, but she's good at working the crowd. Uh, yeah, the segment... Gail comes down. Gail looks so small now in comparison to everyone else. I, I don't know what it is, but she, we know she's fantastic, but she doesn't look imposing. But anyway, that's, that's not really all there. Segment was good. I think you're quite right. The, the multi-man tag, I think it was more to do with space on the card. If they wanted to get Tyre in something with Rosemary, then I don't think they really wanted three knockout matches on the card. And I think that's maybe the reason why they've gone down this route. It might also be help, you know, to to uh, help hide some of Taryn's ring rust, because she hasn't wrestled much, has she? So so maybe it's going to help disguise that a little bit, that you know, you'd know you get the focus on it if it was just two of them, whereas if it's four of them, you can hide away from that a bit more. So, But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, The knockouts has been strong all year. You know, It's been really good all year, uh, the whole programming. So yeah, looking forward to the match. You know, I told a story last week. You already heard this. So, I mean, the, uh, it's obviously funnier the first time around, but uh, just, just for the listeners... My uh, my old lady hasn't really been watching a whole lot of Impact anymore. She used to always watch it with me, and now she just kind of does her own thing. Um, but she has a knack of walking in every time the knockouts are in there, and she uh, she's not a big fan of the knockouts. I'm not gonna lie. And uh, Taryn, <laughs> Taryn will always be out there when she comes when she walks into the room, and she will look at me with this death stare, like it is my <laughs> fault that Taryn is dressed like that. I mean, just. I tell you what was funny this week. Bearing in mind what she usually wears, it was when she got you know thrown out the ring, or when she was backing up the ring, she pulled down her tutu to cover up her modesty, which I, I thought was hilarious. You know, it was just <laughs> trying to protect her dignity when what she wears usually. Yeah. You know, pulling <laughs> pulling down a little tiny tutu. Uh, but there you go. Uh, there was there was a moment though. She was when she was on the ground crawling. This is just bad camera work. Uh, she went straight like spread eagle. And the, uh, not that it showed anything, but I mean, it's not the classiest pose for a woman. Um, and the camera just, boom, just got it. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, oh God. Um, get an Alberto El, El Patron video package, so he's going to be a Bound for Glory. I'm curious to see what they do with him. Um, I know the initial storyline apparently was supposed to him. Supposed to be him having a match with Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett replaced by Rey Mysterio. That all fell through. So I think a very similar storyline is still going to happen to where um, I think there's going to be like an open challenge or something. We could see like a Jack Swagger or something. That's that's just kind of my own opinion. Just on that note, can I cut across? Uh, in the UK, we didn't get the uh, Alberto promo for some reason. It, it was very quick. Um, I don't even remember what it was, to be to be frank. Uh but yeah, that's weird. And I know that um, in the U.S. and U.K. and Canada, everything sometimes the the, the packages and uh, promos um, are always a little differ, uh, always a little different in between segments. So um, weird. Uh, I think it just has to do with the commercial commercial length and everything. Uh, mm-hmm. Did we get a backstage Mackenzie with uh, Sienna, Caleb Conley, and Tejano? And this was something I didn't quite understand because. They were, they were kind of implying that Caleb Conley was replacing Trevor Lee, but the match was never announced with Trevor Lee in it. 
Um, you know, from the minute the graphic came out, Caleb Conley was always on there. So that was a little uh, a little strange, but I kind of like the segment overall. Mackenzie's doing a lot better. She overacts a lot, um, but but she's doing better. She used to be super robotic back there. Now she's a lot more uh, believable when speaking. She just, with the facial expressions and everything, she, she just overacts. Um, she kind of does the same stuff every time, regardless of what's being said. And uh, but I, I thought this was kind of cool, actually. Um, it reminded me of some like '80s Survivor series, uh, you know, like Mean Gene with Hulk Hogan's team, and they're all just the four of them yeah. standing there. They're all fired up, and they all have something real quick to say. And um, any guy, any thoughts on this one? Well, just, just very quickly, you mentioned the '80s there. That's the second time you mentioned it. Funnily enough, on Spike, where they show it in the UK, Spike UK. On every advert break, they they're advertising the hell out of the A Team reruns. So there you go. That, that, that carries on the eighties theme for you. <laughs> uh, it does. But no, you're right. It, it you know it does seem like that Mean Gene scene. Just, just on, on the note of the of the four five of them, because I think KM was there as well. KM and Sienna, uh, I, I, those two are great. And KM, I know that you're not high on him, or maybe it was Roe Ro that wasn't, but I, I think he he's brilliant. I really like him. And when he's when you're there live and he's walking around the ring, he does interact with the with the crowd as well, and, and I think he's he's really good. I kind of hope he gets something to do soon because at the moment uh, he's re- oh he wrestled the other week, didn't he, against Johnny Impact? But apart from that, I, you haven't really seen him in the ring, and, and he's a big guy. He's a massive guy. He, he could be another one who, you know, if they build him right and try and rebuild him, could be a star. No, I love KM. I just I I feel like the the comedy aspect holds Sienna back a little bit. Um, That's all I was getting at. But no, I I like KM a lot. One thing, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, One thing I was going to say. (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) We'll have to edit this bit out. Uh, No, I was just going to say it was good to see Caleb uh, on the on the mic as well because he hasn't had much mic time. There hasn't really been much reason for why he's with Trevor Lee, and it was good just to actually see him. You know, get some get some talk time. Right, um, and we talked about this last week. Uh, you know, the storytelling was very lazy with how. I mean, if you think it was lazy with Caleb Conley hooking up with Trevor Lee, it's it was ten times lazier with Andrew Everett <laughs> randomly, you know, hooking back up with them. And um, yeah, there's just been a lot of lot of super lazy st- storytelling, um, w- w- just with this set of tapings in general and the build to the pay per view. One thing I really didn't enjoy at all, and this is always real hit or miss for me every week, is, is that was the Grado thing with Joseph Park. So a couple of weeks ago, they're having dinner, and he goes, here's your royalty check, and there's not shit on it. Um, and then the next week, well, we're doing this meet and greet for $100, and you know everyone's doing it, and they make all this money, and he gives a couple hundred to Grado, um, which... You know, the first time it was like, okay, here's nothing. The second time, okay, here's something. And all of a sudden, he's pulling up with the convertible with the ladies in it who um actually pretty decent actors. Um, and then they call, oh, is this the meal ticket? And Grado got upset. And they, I just didn't get it. You know, did you, know, you have any uh, anything to say on this? Yeah, I, I mean, um, Grado must be a huge star in the States. I mean, if he's funding... Uh... Joseph Park's uh, sports entertainment division alone. Uh, he must be some staff. He's charging a hundred for a meet and greet. But um, yeah, I mean, obviously it's building towards some kind of match or some, some payoff somewhere. And I don't mind it because, you know, at least they're giving Grado something to do. I'll tell you what they could do. Actually, we're talking about comedic characters and KM. They might be actually be an all right tag team putting those two together uh, just because they both got a bit of comedy value, you know, a heel and a face, together in that you know odd couple kind of relationship i don't know anyway that, that's that's long-term fantasy booking which i know you hate uh with regards <laughs> to the segment, it, it, it was fine it was okay you know uh it, it's chugging along and I, I and as i said at the beginning i like these kind of storylines they are hit and miss i can only really see it going to a, a match between the two eventually does anybody really want to see that though no <laughs> absolutely not um it, there, there is a possibility but i i don't get it i really don't and then they, I thought I thought they had an opportunity to do something with Laurel and her, you know, just um, going back to being crazy and, 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 you know, they did a really good job painting that picture that it was going to happen. Um, but she could, she could be stalking him throughout all this stuff or something, you know, like it, it's, 
they could they could really transition uh, Laura to a stalker character from the from the bride, and uh, we're really getting nothing with all. I that. think this is the problem with creative at the moment. They've got seeds of some really nice storylines all over the place. You know, Braxton versus Gaza, uh, Laurel Van Ness, Grado. They could be they could be doing things with all of these people, and everything seems half baked at the moment. It really does, you know. And the things that they are pushing down our throats, like. Uh, Team America, uh, it's just uh, which I, I can't wait to get onto. It's going to be my favorite bit to talk about this week. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> you know they they seem to be going with some things all in, and other things they're holding back on, and and it's just not working. You know, the, the right talent isn't being featured at the moment. I think. Right, absolutely, I, I totally agree with that. Then we get the um, and they even called it a random six man tag, so at least they addressed it. But uh, Sienna, Caleb Conley, and Tejano versus Ali James Storm and Desmond. I, you know, this, I enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I might. I mean, I like the people involved for the most part, but it was so random that I was like, man, this is probably going to last, you know, all of three minutes. Um, I actually kind of liked it, number one, because everyone got an entrance. They very easily could have jobber entranced a couple of these guys, you know, already had them in the ring or something, or already had the whole heel team in the ring, but everyone got an entrance, which I really think is very important in making a match feel important um you know the minute you have someone's waiting in the ring already it loses a lot of steam um just just from a perception standpoint but i thought it was you know i thought it was actually pretty decent um i think i think one aspect of the match i really liked is that when sienna tagged in she started going after james storm even though it wasn't a um multi-gender match it was a mixed tag you know, she wasn't supposed to be wrestling the guys, which she made a comment about she'd be willing to wrestle the guys uh, last week. And she kind of followed through on that. So that's something I kind of actually really liked about this match. It was pr- really what I took from it. Um, you know, Caleb Conley just always seems to be the guy that just in there to take the fall. Uh, you know, I, I wish I wish we could see uh, him do something. <laughs> but... uh he always, he always takes takes the fall. You know, we get Desmond Xavier for the first time in a while. You know, I, I don't know if they even plug the Super X Cup or whatever, but they're, they're pretty much telling us that the Super X Cup is, is nothing, that it's um, a one-night only, basically, and uh, unfortunate. But what were you thinking about this six-man match? Yeah, so just to finish up on Desmond there, I think the same thing. You know, it's a bit of a shame because they don't really seem to be doing much with the uh, X division at the moment. You know, and he, he would be ideal to get a title shot for it. I don't know if they're going to name something next. Well, no, they're in the six man tag, aren't they? Um, Trevor Lee is, isn't he? From memory, have they announced the next division match? I can't remember. I know Sanjay's in it as well, isn't he? They're, they're, I mean, they're teasing it. Yeah, they're teasing. I, I mean. There's so many. It's another guy, you know, where they could have done something with, and they had a big build uh, around the Slam anniversary time for it. And, and once again, he's lost complete momentum. The match was good. There's some sloppy bits in it. I, I think Ali. I, I know she's a veteran on on the Indies, but she still doesn't. She looks really green at the moment. It was quite sloppy, like uh, her spear on uh, Sienna. Uh, she also did like a, a takedown on the outside of the ring. Uh, it, it looks it looks very sloppy at the moment. But as, as overall, I like it. Caleb's fantastic james storm you know he's still got some mileage in him which i like yeah it was, it was a good match good match yeah the uh, takedown on the outside was a uh, was a huge miss um and there's something about that spot i don't know if it's a position of the ring steps or what it is but the the knockouts seem to miss that outside dive a lot gail kim has um overshot two of them this year alone um something about that spot i don't know what it is but yeah the the spear I don't really think women should do spears. Um, I just don't think they they ever look good. Um, then we get some clips of the Global Forged. Uh, I'm still not totally following what they're trying to achieve. I mean, I know what they're trying to achieve, but it's it's all so quick. Um, you know, there's a couple guys I'm fans of here, Hakeem Zane and Jake something. So uh, I hope I, I hope, I hope to see them uh, move forward. And uh, we get LAX in the clubhouse. And they make it a strong point to say that Homicide will be back for Bound for Glory. And uh, I thought they made too strong of a point about it, to be honest. I know they were kind of trying to cover up for the fact that he wasn't at the tapings. But um, I, I, I kind of think like this might lead to... 
I know the OVE has like a sister. Um, I thought she was injured, but uh, she could play a role in all this, being that it's a street fight. Diamante's on there. You know, something going back to the beginning of the show, did you catch when uh, one of the Chris brothers uh, pushed De Diamante? No, I missed that. I missed that. Oh, like right when they start brawling, one of them just, because Diamante was the last one talking, and they just shove her, and she just flat back bumps. I mean, real hard on the mat. It was very, uh, we don't normally see male on female action like that anymore. No, well, well, it's going back to what you know. I've said a few times that at the moment they've got faces acting like doing heelish things. You know, even like the Grado dumping her, uh, dumping LVN because she wasn't American. You know, that that's a very heelish thing to do. Right. But you know, and that, that again, yeah, you know, OV. I'm guessing are supposed to be faces. You know, they're they're trying to invoke face reactions from the crowd, but then they push over a woman. <laughs> you know, it's uh, yeah, it, it, it's strange, isn't it? Very, and um, and then we we before the main event we get Moose um, pulling up to the Americans top team facility with Stephen Bonner, and um, I'm a very casual MMA fan, so I, I'm not going to pretend I'm familiar with him. I do watch MMA, I just not uh, super knowledgeable on it. But so that leads up to the uh, final segment, and this never fails when they have a main event, which is not really a main event. They, they never go all in on it. They say, okay, here's the main event, but we're going to give you a segment afterwards too. Uh, you know, but if it was <laughs> yeah. like Storm or EC3 in the match, they would, you know, it would close the match. I mean, close the evening. Um, but it does not fail. So, I'm sorry, did you have something? Yeah, I was going to say that, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and maybe they realize that, that Gaza Jr. is not a draw at this point against Johnny Impact. So they, they want a shock value at the end. So, yeah, you're quite right. And as far as this match um, for Johnny Impact versus Garza Jr., and you might have to give me your thoughts on it a little bit more, I watched about the first three minutes of it, and then I accidentally, you know, I was uh, behind in the DVR, just a, not a, I wasn't DVRing, DVRing it, I was watching it live, but I had hit pause when I was making my kids dinner or putting them to bed or something. So I was back, I was behind a few minutes, um, and I accidentally sat on the control and changed the channel. And then when I flipped back, um, it showed uh, the replay of Johnny Impact rolling him up for the win. So I really missed most of this. Um, what what do you think about it? Um, I really liked the beginning of it. You know where they that kind of they evenly matched three minutes of really going at it, putting lots of moves and reversing them, doing the same one back. Although a lot of the moves looked, once again, sloppy, and I don't really want to always talk about sloppy moves, but, you know, some of them look very, you know, as if they didn't connect with them properly. I really liked the, that opening to it. I thought it was very good, very high-paced, very intense, which both of these guys are about. Now, the whole match itself, great back and forth. Uh, the ending, though, why do you make the guy who you want to make your top baby face uh, in Johnny Impact get him a roll-up win, you know, it just at least give him a strong looking win going into Bound for Glory. You, you don't, you shouldn't win a match for the top main event of your top pay per view with a roll up. I know you want to protect Gaza Jr., but it's crazy. It's absolute crazy. You should give him a proper win. No, totally agreed. I think this match was designed to get Garza over, um, like with the post match, you know. Shenan not shenanigans, but just holding his arm up and, yeah, this guy here, you know, I, I don't know if it's going to work or not. I thought Eli Drake watching from Japan was kind of silly because, I mean, we got the UK's not even watching the same time we he are here in the United States. So um, you're, you're going to tell me that him in Japan streaming from his uh, his tablet or his iPad is watching watching live. I thought, thought it was kind of silly. Um, so, yeah, he gets the win. Uh, match had a little bit of time, you know, not as long as some of the previous main events, but um, Johnny Impact wins. Every Everybody knew he was going to win. I mean, there was just no mystery to this whatsoever. Um, There's no way Garza Jr. was going to main event Bound for Glory. And, um, yeah, we're getting Impact versus Drake at the pay-per-view, which should be good um, as long as Eli Drake wins. But we'll cover Bound for Glory down the line. 
Um, oh, and, and then after the match, uh, Chris Adonis hit him over the head with a board. So maybe we're going to get something with, a, you know, Impact and Adonis for a little bit, which uh, be okay with it. You know, it makes sense storyline wise. How many how many shows we got left? Is it is it two or? Ooh, two, I think two. Two, yeah. So yeah, that might make sense. Uh, but by the way, the streaming thing um, from Japan, I, I didn't actually mind that because it it shows because at least it's showing Eli on the show first of all. And you know, if this was WWE, they'd be backstage watching a monitor or something like that of the show. So it's the same kind of principle, but it's just to show the global reach, I'm guessing. But I didn't mind that. I thought it was quite funny, to be honest. Um, yeah, yeah you, you, but, you make a good point. Yeah. The 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 run in by Chris Adonis. I mean, it seemed so lackadaisical how he came in and slow and telegraphed. I mean, Johnny Impact seems like the dumbest guy on the roster at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that he didn't notice it happening. I mean, it was so slow and, um, yeah. But there you go. And then Cornet uh, Cornet yelled something where he totally over oversold it. Um, Watch out or something. It it, it was not good. <laughs> but um, so. Last part of this, and we talked about last week that the whole segment with Moose showing up at the uh, America Top Team facility, how like how cheesy it was, but at the same time, I was super entertained by it. Um, even though it was, it was just like really bad, and I was laughing at the beginning when he pushed Dan Lambert into the cage, and he just like bounces off the cage, you know, like right back on his feet. <laughs> um, I, I just thought it was funny. I thought the whole segment with Moose with a uh, Mo, King Mo clocking him and everything like Cole clocking him the minute he walked in um, was all funny. It was all cheesy. The beatdown was terrible. And there's a, that one guy in America's top team that cannot make anything look believable. But I still was entertained by it. This was wasn't that same level of cheese, but oh, I, I I think you're underselling the cheese on that. One. Are you really? But carry um, on. <laughs> but I was I. I thoroughly enjoyed it to be totally honest with you um i just i didn't like the receptionist re response where she reminded us that it was a fake wrestling show you know but um uh can, can i just come up with some comments here because i've been waiting for this part of our of the podcast all week yeah i, I really have <laughs> uh, i mean first things first they turn up the guys do and they park in the disabled base. <laughs> I don't know why that bothered me. It just did. They park sideways across the base. Second thing is, it seems like it's the middle of the night. So why have they got a single woman in America's top team on reception by herself in the middle of the night? Uh, there you go. That, that sounds like a, a good place to go and rob. Thirdly, the week that OJ Simpson gets out for stealing sports memorabilia, uh, <laughs> you get two guys going in and stealing sports memorabilia from America's top team which I thought timing was ironically brilliant. Um, what receptionist doesn't have pen and paper when they said, have you got a pen and paper? Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to go off and get it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the laxest security in the world. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, the whole segment from start to finish was, was ridiculous, uh, but hilariously ridiculous. Um, <laughs> I'm guessing it's going to be a multi-man MMA tag team shoot match or something. I don't know. What, what do you think is going to happen? Or do you think it's maybe building to a Lesnar-Bonner match? Do you think that's a possibility? Well, I, I know... Not Lesnar, not, not, not Lesnar, sorry, uh, Lashley. I know what the match is, um, only because uh came across a spoiler by accident, but I don't want to... So I, I, I don't want to get into it. Okay. Um, because I don't like spoiling stuff on the show, but... I actually do have some interest in this now, you know, as opposed to weeks upon weeks where I'm like, I don't really care for this. At first, I liked it, and then I started disliking it after it was too much. Um, but yeah, it was just hilariously cheesy. Um, all, all the points you make is <laughs> is pretty true. Uh, yeah, worst the one thing I would say about ever. it. So uh -huh. one thing I will say about it is that Lashley, he's going to be one of the guys in the match. Obviously, and it's all about him supposedly, but he's barely featured in it. It's been more about. Team America, Dan Lambert, and Moose, but then it has been about Lashley. Lashley has almost been a secondary character in this 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 whole storyline. He has. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, they tr they really try to sell us on that Moose and him got into it in Mexico and everything. I mean, I thought it was all really forced. Didn't play out on TV very well, but 
I'm I'm actually pretty now that now that I know what the match is, I'm kind of excited for it. But uh, I don't know. I can't wait to see what they do next week. <laughs> Obviously, Lambert's going to respond, so uh, we'll probably see them in the impact zone this time. And uh, <laughs> I, I I just hope they carry on doing the, these crazy scenes. You know, as I said at the beginning of the show, I, I really like this kind of stuff. Uh, I mean, this one though, to me. <laughs> I, I don't mind. I said that I liked the search for Willow, which was stupid. It was a stupid segment. So it was the funeral phrases and eights. But because they're trying to tie an MMA with this, it has to be grounded in some form of realism for me. It's different to that kind of wacky stuff that I talked about before. But, you know, two guys going in and smashing up somewhere. That's a criminal act. <laughs> you know, right. And that's the bit that, that I struggle with. If they're, they're trying to do something that is supposed to be real in the MMA world, then you can't be doing shit like this. You know, uh, um, it would have been different if there had been a, a brawl and Dan would have been there and they're doing it to teach him a lesson kind of thing. But to, to just go in and the receptionist just waved to them at the end. All right, bye. Yeah, bye, bye. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. They've just trashed the place. And she's like, yeah, okay, bye. I'll pass on your message. Yeah. <sighs> the, the, that's, that's the part that really like kind of ruined it for me at the end. But, but they, they messed that crap up. They, whew. They went to town on all that. <laughs> anyway, but overall, I am looking forward to where this goes because uh, it's like a guilty pleasure. You know, I think that's what this is getting into now. That I just want to see how they can top the stupidity of this next yeah. week. Oh, cannot wait. Cannot wait. But yeah, Bound for Glory build, not good. Um, some some good aspects on the show, but, you know, they got two more shows to really build this thing up. I don't, you know. I don't know what's going to happen. We only know a handful of matches. They still got to, you know, give us about four or five more. So, um, and I have no clue what they could be. <laughs> I mean, not not even a, clue, a little bit. I mean, obviously, we're probably going to get a six man AAA Impact match, but some of these other matches, I don't have a clue in hell because there's so now, much multi man match stuff, stuff going on. Maybe they'll have. Maybe they'll revisit Gaza versus Braxton. That that could be a possibility. Um, that, that's about the only one I can think. Park versus uh, Grado, in some form. I think they're, they're the two that are most likely to, to be revisited. But uh, another tag team match. I mean, we haven't seen much of Veterans of War. Maybe Alberto will get a match of some sort. Yeah. So uh, you're right. It needs filling out the card. And, and when you're two weeks out, you kind of want a bit more directional. You know, we shouldn't be guessing at this point. We, we should be saying well i can see this is going to happen but right here we are yeah scratching our heads yeah so let's hope next two uh shows we get some answers um so that'll do it for us this week do you, you got anything uh closing you want to say no no I, I mean um two weeks to go I, i'm really excited about it and we get it for free over here in the uk he <laughs> uh, so <laughs> so yeah we get it i don't think it's live though although they haven't announced that yet um, so I think we usually get it on the Wednesday night after the pay-per-view, but I'll, I'll be looking forward to it. It'll be good. Uh, it, I just hope that they make some of the right booking decisions, and I'm sure we'll talk about this as we get close, but, you know, uh, we've, we've talked about Johnny Impact versus Eli. I really hope Eli does something and, and keeps the title on him, and it's the same with Sienna and those kind of things. You know, I, I really like who are the champions at the moment, and I just hope that they don't, do some radical let's get ex WWE guys who are going to be you know the champions going forward because it doesn't work it doesn't move the needle what they need to do is build their own stars absolutely I fully agree with that so that'll do it for us this week impact review thanks for tuning in sorry about last week um, I'm back on track here and uh, we'll talk to you guys next week peace <laughs>